Flamenco TV is a seldom known internet figure mostly known for his coverage on VTuber related internet situations on YouTube. However, his history goes far beyond that, as he has ties of being a former host of a prevalent right-wing podcast who bounces around from community to community whenever he gets caught up in his own drama. Shout out to the channel members like always, and if you'd like to support yourself, you can check out my Patreon in the corner or YouTube memberships by clicking the join button. For those of y'all that know what we're about to get ourselves into, good on y'all. And for those of y'all that don't know, good luck. Flamenco TV wasn't always Flamenco TV, as he originally started under the name Flamenco TRS, TRS standing for the right stuff, which is a website that hosts far-right podcasts and other rather crazy, extreme, borderline insane beliefs as one might put it. While a lot of his early career isn't very well documented, from what I've heard throughout the grapevine is that he would stream on the now-defunct alt-tech website StreamMe. He was known for always promoting his streams in other people's chats, which mainly consisted of him playing SNES ROMs. You can still find a Reddit account from that era of his online career, created in 2018 around the time when StreamMe existed. He only posted a small handful of times, but this thread can sum up his personality pretty quickly, and it was easy to see he wasn't exactly a figure seen in a very positive light even from the very beginning of his career. This self-promoting would eventually pay off however, as after being a consistent donator to right-wing talk show streamer Ethan Ralph, Flamenco would be able to come to the show and chat with him and the viewers. However, Ralph just seemed to tolerate him at best, and would mess around with him on stream for content after catching on to his personality and general awkwardness. Ralph would eventually warm up to the guy for one reason or another, and this would lead to him becoming one of the co-hosts of the Ralph Retorts Kill stream in 2019. Flamenco would then shed the TRS from his name and embrace being called Flamenco TRR from that point onwards to celebrate this big step forward in his internet career. Flamenco would appear in some of the Ralph Retorts biggest shows around that time period, such as being on stream during one of Ralph's first pill stream arcs, in which Flamenco tried to reason with him to not do anything drastic while he was high on pills. But it's probably not a good idea to do it on air. One of Flamenco's biggest contributions to Ralph's show was successfully getting the at the time rising leftist streamer Vosh to appear on one of the episodes. This stream is also infamous for Vosh, as he used a particular slur when arguing with other users, in which he defended it in the comment section as a tactical n-word. Dude, right. you can just say n this isn't the end of the Flamenco Vosh connection, however, as in late 2019, Vosh would make a video about Flamenco that received around 80k views as of today. The video painted Flamenco as a lunatic stalker by showcasing the fact he would spam DM Vosh for long periods of time with no response from him, and some really strange instances of what can only be described as very terminally online behavior. And this is my this is my favorite one. Um, he's actually gone like two months and 40 messages without a response from me. And he would be there and he'd be cringy in chat. And then he would leave and someone else came on called Far Left Chud. By which I mean Far Left Chud joined right as Flamenco left. And they type really similarly. So I, you know, having my glorious admin powers over the website, pulled their IP addresses, which I have handily censored here. And holy shit, they're the same damn person. Not only are they the same person, dudes made like seven accounts on my website, all with different email addresses. But that's not all. These people have separate, not only do these people have separate um, Twitter accounts, these people, these people have separate Kiwi Farms accounts. Do you want to see something truly glorious? And then Flamenco responds, what did I supposedly do now? Far Left Chud responds, someone trolled him with a username called Zoe Quinn is a liar and he thought it was you. We pulled the IP addresses. It was him. They're the same person. While being a co-host of the Ralph Retort, Flamenco would befriend another co-host of the show called Augie RFC. Augie hosted his own online show called After Hours. While the Ralph Retort does cover a lot of internet drama related shenanigans, at the end of the day it was still a right wing centered stream with a focus on political news and debates. Augie's show however focused more on the mainstream YouTube and internet controversies, while occasionally dabbling into right wing internet drama if it piqued his interest. Flamenco would leave the Rafa tour in 2020 due to fear of being doxxed, but he wouldn't disappear from the internet though, as he would just go on to focus on his own streams and build up his own audience while also becoming a frequent co-host of After Hours. Flamenco would appear on some of the show's most popular episodes such as the Pokemon and EDP 445 ones, giving him access to a whole new audience of people that knew nothing of his past. This connection to Augie would eventually lead him into coming into contact with retired YouTuber Nicholas Diorio, but instead of being chill with him, they would butt heads a lot given their different personalities, and a general hatred for one another would become a common thing with their dynamic whenever they were in a call together. Now during his time after leaving the Ralph Retort and working on his own career, Flamenco garnered a lot of popularity and attention covering VTubers on his YouTube channel. When he started covering them, they were still somewhat new to the Western audience, and there was a bit of drama from the get-go during this phase. 
One of the most noteworthy interactions he had was with streamer Iron Mouse in late 2021, one of the most successful and well-known VTubers in her genre, in which she called him out for restreaming her response regarding drama within the company she worked for in front of over 11,000 people. There's somebody restreaming what I'm saying right now? Jesus Christ. Oh, f*** you, chat. F*** you. While Iron Mouse considered reporting his stream as she thought that might have been against some sort of rule in the Twitch TOS, they would soon make up in private and let bygones be bygones. In early 2022, he also had a video crack over 100k views covering a clip of VTuber Calliope Mori's response to his super chatter saying she didn't want to deal with cancel culture bullshit. It seemed that his change from a right-wing podcast co-host to VTube drama streamer was working alright for him so far, but his past would eventually start to haunt him sooner or later. By February 2022, Flamenco had cemented himself within the RFC community as a reoccurring character who would pop into Augie's streams to give his take or help keep the show flowing. Some people liked him and some people hated him, but by this point it was accepted he was going to be around for the future. However, he started engaging in behaviors that some in that community had an issue with, such as during a stream that month where he was discussing contacting leftist streamer Xander Hall's mother about what he said about her on stream, with his reason for doing so was because Xander Hall was considering making an expose video on him. I don't know if his mom knows about that. I'm wondering, should I send his mom all this nasty stuff that he said about her? Hmm. It really makes you think, it really makes you think. Augie would then pull him onto his stream and discuss the situation with him for a bit, in which Flamenco says he didn't really care despite planning on going as far as to contact someone's mother over internet beef. Is All of this was never a, like, uh, an ultimatum sort of thing. It's a, like, I don't care if you make the video, but if you do, go after I me. I think I'm you do care. You. you seem very threatened by it, though. They would continue to discuss and watch a clip of Flamenco already showing a bit of regret for his choice in the stream. Flamenco would admit overreacting and walking back his plan. And interestingly enough, would claim that in the Vosh clip we just saw, the Kiwi Farms account stuff was apparently a lie, so who knows what's going on there. I definitely overreacted. This is definitely over overreaction. Well, that, what was like, the yeah, thing I, that you I denied made, from the Vosh video? There's half of them. There's half of them that aren't me, but they're... Like, there was ones that, like, yeah. Uh, there, I don't have separate accounts on, like, anything other than Discord, though. Okay, not the website stuff is all fake, I guess. Yeah, yeah. And what about Kiwi Farms? Yeah, I only have one account there. The rest of the stream would be more of the same. But by the end, people came to understand that Flamenco has a pattern of doing or saying a lot of outlandish stuff. Such as this right here when reacting to a clip from his stream. Some people are saying do it. Some people are saying don't do it. It's not ruination. No, it wouldn't be ruination because you just have to get a freaking job. I'm just, I'm just, I, I want to. What does I, I would, that mean? Uh, I believe that he's probably like being subsidized by his mom. You sound like a schizo. Wait, what? Yeah. Do you have like any evidence for that? Who cares? Uh, um, I, yeah, fair enough. This pattern of behavior become a lot more prevalent as time went on. And in fact, one of the most famous examples of this would happen soon after the Xanderhal situation. During his coverage of the infamous leftist livestreamer Keffels, someone who claimed to be a member of the communist political party she was formerly a part of would allege that she embezzled money to fuel her drug addiction. Flamenco would see this and promote it as a fact on Twitter, despite this being strictly rumors and hearsay and nothing more. All the discussions that came after this led to him doubling down and repeating the phrase allegations are evidence to his naysayers, which as you can understand, is a pretty stupid thing to say. There's evidence to back it up. There is what evidence? evidence that makes the allegation credible. What evidence? Like, I, the, the tweet, the allegation is out there. Well, allegations well, are a evidence. Tweet, a tweet is not evidence. A tweet is not evidence. Allegations are evidence. Allegations are evidence. No, no, they are not. His inability to take the L and understand what he's saying is extremely stupid was Cement Flamenco as a very interesting person, to put it lightly. And that phrase would become pretty ironic down the line in due time. In early April, Ethan Ralph hosted a bowling event in which he was supposed to get married and Flamenco was restreaming the event and covering it, accidentally leaking his email on air for his viewers to see. Given his audience, they would immediately use it to try and figure out his identity as he had been a faceless voice up to that point, and in doing so, they would discover a couple interesting things about the guy. One of them was linking another email they had found to an account on an escort website, and another of the Ethan Ralph email leak of a long-winded post with Flamenco under the name Batoe312 looking to start a BDSM relationship online. The most eventful discovery, however, was people finding that the email had an account linked to the hub, and when going through it, there were a handful of rather interesting videos listed throughout his watch history that I'm sure you get an idea of judging by the titles alone. Given the kind of audience he has and his ties to the right-wing side of the internet, they would go absolutely nuts on the guy and make fun of him heavily for his interest in the bedroom. Trying to quell the flames, Flamenco would come to the show called the Kino Casino to explain what was going on here. He had ties to them before as they were both involved with the Ethan Ralph bowling event, 
But now seeing he had these kinds of interests, they decided to basically just laugh and make fun of him while asking uncomfortable questions, such as getting him to admit he tried butt stuff once but didn't like it. One finger. And I was just like, yeah, no, this isn't for me. Now, as you might have noticed, there's an image on the right hand side there that looks rather suspicious given what we've been talking about. It turns out that alongside the leaks of his special interests, people are able to link together an account he made on the hentai website, that which included him favoriting a comic called Boy Soprano, a comic about a 15 year old boy who was clearly used by older women for purposes that are too disgusting to explain. Given the comic has these two tags attached to it in proof of Flamenco seeing it, people were disgusted to say the least to see him consume this kind of content in his spare time. The Kino Casino would ask him about these interests during their stream with him, and he would deny them straight up as he listened intently to him. So are you mm -hmm. into lolly con flam? Nah. What are about you... con? Yeah. Nah. But you did watch a con. Again, a bunch of people have DM'd me, and apparently, like, that tag is erroneous. And they've, like, it demonstrated, like, in various ways how it is, so I don't know. A few days later, Augie uploaded a video responding to the entire situation, saying he didn't care what he was into responding to the other stuff, though points out it was still up in the air whether Flamenco was into Lolly or Shoda, admitting that he didn't want to cast him aside yet because he hadn't made up his mind. Again, I don't care about any of the stuff that he was into. I already could have told you he was a freak before any of this came out. The only thing I care about is whether or not it was con, which is up in the air, which is bad. <laughs> which is weird. It's really weird. Uh, I haven't come to my own decision yet, honestly, because, I, again, it's just really weird stuff. As Flamenco's name would become more and more known throughout internet circles due to his affiliations and current controversy, he was still going about trying to make his way through, even doing his unceremonious face reveal when going to a political panel hosted by streamer Destiny on May 4th. He would even meet up with Augie and YouTuber Turkey Tom during this event as well. Showing that despite the boy soprano controversy, Augie was still either unsure in casting him aside or had privately made up his mind in favor of Flamenco, but there's no way to tell for certain. It was even discovered during this time there was a sealed family court document in his name, but when questioned he would never pipe up about it due to its sensitive nature. However, it seemed that despite the allegations levied against him, Flamenco was looking to keep his streaming career moving forward even with these speed bumps getting in his way. Of course, you probably have an idea how this story is about to go because let's just say that the road is about to get a little more than just bumpy for him in due time. The first glimpses of this would actually happen in late April, as internet personality Salvo Pancakes would call into an Augie stream to promise Flamenco's downfall. Flamenco, by the time I'm done with you, you will be I promise you. <laughs> really? Promise you. you would finally do it. Bully you think, that, you think Flamenco, that covering me will actually get some traction? At the time, this was seen as Salvo trying to stoke the flames for attention and entertainment. But a situation would come up months later that set everything into motion for the man. In June, users discovered Flamenco was in a German sting group with some accounts that had images of underage girls, and the owner of the group specifically had a very suspect Steam account that implies exactly what you're probably thinking right now. This will lead to more people claiming that Flamenco was into that stuff, in which he would join a live stream to defend himself, with people telling him to do the PP test in order to prove his innocence as they messed around and made fun of him. While all this was going on, Salvo made a video discussing the commentary community, calling him out for a double standard when it came to dealing with Flamenco. Nobody's going live. Nobody wants to even bring it up. Why? Because they're afraid to. Because they're spineless. Flamenco would respond by streaming all day long, eventually calling into the Kino Casino again to defend himself as he wanted to discuss the recent Steam group leaks. Despite his back being against the wall, Flamenco would actually win the majority of the audience due to them trying to imply they have something damning on him without showing any evidence, and also their general lack of organization and knowledge on what was going on. I've told you to give me the evidence of the stuff that's at hand, the Steam you're stuff with the weird shit. shit, and you're unable to produce anything. You're, you're saying, oh, there's evidence, there's evidence, I'm not seeing it. Flamenco would use this leverage to declare himself innocent and say that people were trying to set him up and that the Steam group wasn't always like that, and things would move on from there in this victory of his. Salvo's still doing his own thing, however, as he had made a couple short videos leading up to this moment such as making the allegation that Flamenco would wear a chastity toy to prevent him from giving away his interest if he did the PP test. This was entertaining banter, but nothing that really hit him where it hurt, so Salvo would take things a step further by going in a different route than most people expected. Instead of the normal antagonization approach during people's live streams or videos, he would do his own stream on his own show Breakland, premiering a parody song by musician and commentary community member Mike the Bike featuring the lyric, Hey! 
During this stream, he had a framed photo of Flamenco on his desk while dressed up as his VTuber persona, and would even rip up a Sonic doll as part of the trolling skit nature of his show. Flamenco would try to twist this as Salvo encouraging people to do violent acts upon him when it was pretty obvious this was just part of the show and nothing more, which annoyed a lot of people as he was trying and failing to victimize himself to him. I hate Flamenco, and I hate Sonic! So, I, I'm, I'm curious, like, th this is like open season now, anybody can say that they want to kill somebody live on air like that? Do you think this clip is serious, Flamenco? No, but does that mean that like people are able to just do that whenever they want now? On top of that, he was upset that the song called him a pedo, yet he has a personal playlist on his channel featuring a song by MC Java that called Ethan Roth the same exact stuff, showing him being a hypocrite as well. With people seeing Flamenco losing his shit over typical banter for that side of the internet alongside the blatant hypocrisy, they started to clown on him more than ever before. He would join in on a stream by Doc on the radio and start to talk trash and Mike on the bike over the song he made, meaning he was clearly upset that people were making fun of him despite him trying to convince them otherwise. Augie would even write a 17-page manifesto of sorts going into detail on why he doesn't like him anymore, ranging from his constant arguing and awful takes, how he always backs down after saying something crazy, and generally just being an unhinged and extremely sensitive person whenever people start to go at it. It goes into the nitty gritty of his antagonistic, annoying and argumentative nature, but most importantly, it brings us back to one of his biggest enemies on the internet, Nicholas Diorio. Now I mentioned earlier that he and Nick hate each other, and that was very well the case whenever they were around each other on the internet. It was a classic rivalry at its finest, but seeing that Flamenco was in a really bad spot now, Nick decided to keep on at it as he enjoyed watching his career falter and wanted it to continue down that path. Diorio would upload a video in the midst of the drama basically compiling the three main things he didn't like about Flamenco. The Xanderhal situation, claiming that allegations are evidence, and the recent parody song situation, uploading it on July 9th, 2022. The video in question would be a giant compilation of the older livestreams containing these moments and get a considerable amount of views on the site, showing even more people just how insane it is to deal with them whenever speaking with him one on one. Oh yeah, those of y'all who know about Flamenco already have probably been getting flashbacks to just how insane arguing with him can get. And while I haven't shown much of that in this video, a snippet for what was about to come from Nick's video will change that shortly. Flamenco will end up getting into one of his many arguments with Nick that very night, and Nick would drop a video the next day containing the argument in question. It would first open up showing Flamenco talking mad trash on a public level but bending the knee in private to Nick in DMs, show how Flamenco was arguing with random people in a shared Discord server of his, and then the stream of them arguing would commence. It's a lot of substanceless name calling and whatnot, but there were a couple of interesting things that went down between the two of them throughout the runtime. Kind of like rely on the, you're Never kidding, mind. it's so nuts. Ah, like you don't really actually engage with anything that people say. Flamenco, I just dropped like a two and a half hour video. Uh. <laughs> I, I feel like I engaged with it more than a few points. I recorded commentary for that. Okay. I'm was there a question? See, this is why, is. like, I'm not particularly worried about losing the uh, approval of the esteemed Nicholas Diorio. Okay. Starts cackling like a f little retard. Like, I don't know, dude. No, That's a good rap name. This is a very small sample size of the stream, but you can understand how the argumentative and hostile dynamic he and Nick had together made him look bad. And alongside the other stuff, such as the Boy Soprano situation, that side of the internet would turn on him more and more because of this. Flamenco would continue to argue with anybody talking about him online, joining another doc on the radio stream to argue with people some more because he just has this need to respond to anything and everything said about him for some reason. He would stream for the next month trying to keep his channel afloat, but as more and more people learned about him and his entire lore, he would lose around 2,000 subscribers during that summer and his name would be dragged through the mud. However, he would give him one last shot to epically own Nicholas Diorio when tuning into an Augie stream on August 13th, in which nothing of substance happens and he again came out looking like a schizo who can't take the L and move on in life. Dog, you're such a f You're still crying about a song? Are you kidding? Yes, a file allegation is worse than a song! I've had it, I've had it for the last like five minutes and you guys haven't given me a single explanation of how it's a f different. Because it's a song, you f <laughs> See, this is how Nick argues. He just like makes these like an argument. I'm making his fun of you. Just, then make an argument. How are you dude. still crying argument. about a song? This I'm is the not. most pathetic thing and I've what ever heard. I'm complaining about the song. I'm complaining about you being a hypocrite. Yeah, you're like, oh, retard. Nick, I disavow. You're such a cowardly pussy. You're such a little. Thousand you're times. actually a little. I, I, and you know, and you know that you're, <laughs> you're full the one shit crying over a song, thing. dude. Who the f 
crying. I don't remember. Jesus. I don't recall. You seem to remember a lot about this conversation, but you seem to not recall the, the argument. Uh, re re yeah, remember Minecraft. 11 months ago in a Minecraft stream. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I certainly remember every moment of it. <laughs> Jesus. God, Nick, you are like actually kind of slow. <laughs> <laughs> Soon after this, he would announce he was taking a hiatus from streaming on his YouTube channel on August 24th, with most people assuming it was because of this meltdown the past summer. However, some people were skeptical as on Kiwi Farms, an account named You All Need a Job would claim that people on the internet swatted a family member of his, and after being questioned about it, they would post a video in which it shows a random person getting swatted, with most people coming to the conclusion this might be the real reason he left the internet. The account would also make mention of the sealed family document from earlier, in which they say it was nothing of substance and related to a family incident that happened when he was a minor after not getting along with his parents. While it was just a random person on the internet, given this was the only lead in the case so far, people were willing to take their word for it as it came through with the swatting video, and it seemed that his internet break was more related to that than him leaving because of the recent summer meltdown. During his break from streaming, Flamenco would kind of just scour about random parts of the internet, such as donating to a stream on August 31st, donating to VTuber Pipkin Pippa, saying some really weird stuff on post a few days later, and even trying to contact Kefels through YouTube locale jailing for some reason only to get sorely rejected. He would make his way back to streaming on November 8th and join a discussion with streamer Stardust about politics, and for the next few months would periodically stream on and off as he was getting back into the groove of things. He would even show up on an episode of Keemstar's now defunct podcast of Savile Pancakes during this sort of return to the internet as well. Enjoying the situation, there's a lot of shot in front of my uh, enemy's expense. Flamenco would continue to jump around from place to place throughout the months, with people mainly just making fun of him or calling him names and such, as by this point his reputation was all but tarnished, and socially he had become the punching bag for a majority of groups he tried to be around. This couldn't be any more true as on March 7th, 2023, He'd upload a clip on Twitter of VTuber Shondo complaining about Twitter users making fun of her, and it would go viral on the site obtaining around 30 million views as of this video, with almost everyone just clowning and bullying him for enjoying watching someone pretend to be an underage girl for their online persona. It's almost poetic seeing one of his major bluffs in the mainstream internet was because of this tweet of his, and yet there was still even more to be found out about the man after this event. For those of y'all that remember, his leaked Reddit account from earlier had the username badtoe312. Well, people would keep doing some digging around archive sites about him, and it would turn out that not only did Flamenco read Boy Soprano at one time, he was one of the people who uploaded it on one of those websites back in the day. This went relatively under the radar as people had moved on and only cared to clown on him by that point in time, but YouTuber Aiden Projects would come across a screenshot and get him into an interview in June 2023, in which he got Flamenco to admit the comic was about a minor after over a year of him denying so. Can you just admit now on stream that you read or you you viewed hentai about a 15 year old yeah sure 10 years ago man Oof. how old wait how old were you 10 years ago sorry i forgot 24 <laughs> sorry you said louder i didn't hear 24 aiden <laughs> okay i'm sorry it's like a condition aiden will ask if it's true he uploaded it he wouldn't deny it, but rather say he doesn't remember and dioria would join in to bully him some more after getting this big admission from the guy he would also end up in a call with YouTuber Michael Alberto soon after that June as well, lying about his recent admittance from what can only be assumed not wanting to embarrass himself. I thought, well, aren't you into like con? No, I'm not. But that's the, you said, didn't you say that on the the? Oh, no, I Aiden? literally didn't. You said you read a manga. I literally about... said the exact opposite. Point four. <laughs> so, so do you see how people would think that's kind of an admittance to looking at, like, or lolly, whatever you want to call it. I mean, I don't know, dude, like... Flamenco these days is a now semi-retired streamer who pops into calls every now and then to talk about whatever's going on. He showed interest in suing and killing Diorio for his part in his downfall, and even joined into another stream with Aiden and tried to get it taken down by inviting someone to spam unsavory images on screen. To get back to the topic, who who's Pixie? Uh-oh. Uh what the f Flam, what the f is wrong with... Flam, I'm not showing the stream. So just so chat knows, he just added someone to the call who pulled up a video of two men getting their ass insides. Flam, are you really that scared of debating me? He's been coasting off his grandparents' inheritance money and generally just kind of been doing his own thing now that it seems his internet career has faded away from him. His story doesn't end there, however, as in late October 2023, Savo Pancakes will get access to one of his banned Twitter accounts and in doing so was able to look back into an old group chat he was in. 
By this point in time, despite being one of the main perpetrators and getting him kicked out from most of his internet circles, Savile himself had been ousted by the same people due to some unrelated drama. He would leak the group chat he was in, and while a lot of it is interesting in its own right, there was one screenshot in particular that was a lot more interesting than the rest. Now as we know, Nicholas Diorio was a contributor in spreading the word around about Flamenco's unhinged nature. Diorio has gone on to trash on him whenever he feels like on Twitter as well, even heavily implying that he's a pedo on the site to his well over 50,000 followers in August 2023. One might think that since Nick posts these memes on his account that he believes the implication of what he's posting, but in Nosava leaks Nick would actually say back in February 2023 that he doesn't believe that at all in private, despite publicly heavily implying it as such after that date. Soon after seeing these leaks, Flamenco would tease the notion of suing Nick again in DMs, and Diorio would end up deleting a handful of videos off his channel around this time as well. Two which are live streams with Fireball being a show Salvo ran and the other being a Flamenco stream, another being part 3 of his Flamenco series, and a handful of others that aren't relevant to the video topic at hand. Given the time frame, this seemed to be a bit more than a coincidence, but I wanted to dig a bit deeper to see if I could get any answers as to why the Flamenco videos are deleted off his channel. I asked around and got into contact with Nick, but when I asked if he was up for an interview, he gave me no comment. Even on Twitter, he hasn't said a word about Flamenco since the leaks, and given there's no other way to investigate this lead, it seems that this is a dead end for now. Perhaps more will come out in the future, but for now, all we can do is wait and see for what happens next, if anything happens at all. After digging through livestream after livestream, it seems the story of Flamenco might still have a little bit more juice to be squeezed. Perhaps more stuff will come out in the future about him or any of the people involved, perhaps not. But in the meantime, all we can do is wait and see what happens next. For all intents and purposes, however, it seems the main arc has officially run its course, and unless something big comes out, this story seems to be officially over. Anything is possible, however, but for now, all we can do is wait and see if something new comes out, or if this is truly the end of the story of Flamenco TV.